What's up, everybody? It's Coach Phil, and welcome to another episode of Deep in the Game. And this is the end of the month special edition. And we, we sure enough got a special edition right here, y'all. We have who I consider a big bro to me, man. He is a three-time Grey Cup champion, man. Defensive lineman for the Montreal Alouettes. And somebody I look up to, man, Sean Lemon. Sean, welcome to the show, man. How you doing? Hey, man, what's going on, my man? Happy to be here, man. Proud of you, man. You, you got your... We got the CFL news going crazy right now in the offseason, all that. Everybody coming to tap in with Coach Bill. So I had, to, I had to come pull up, you know? Well, I had to, man. And I just, I'm just glad to have you, man. I'm just glad to finally have you on. You've been, everybody been wanting to talk to Sean, man. You, the redemption story of the year, man. I don't even start with this one. This ain't even really an interview, man. This is more just a conversation, just chop it up with you, man, and kind of get your story out there. and. Where the hell you been? Because you have been every goddamn where oh, from the pet from 2000 and what 2011 all the way to 2023, man. And you mentioned before we got on camera, man. It's it's the love of the game. Wherever it took you, you went and you did it, man. So you ready? Oh yeah, let's get it, man. All right. So Sean obviously born. He was born in Charleston, South Carolina, and grew up mainly in Waldorf. Wild off, whatever the hell. I, yeah, see, wild I, off. Wild off. Wild same thing. Wild off, wild off, wild door, same thing. Same thing, man. Tell me, where did your love for football start, man? And where did it what where did it start, man, for you? Uh for me, my love for football started it actually started in South Carolina. Um, I was uh what, five years old. My brothers were a little bit older than me. And my dad was coaching a football team, their football team. And I used to go to practice uh, and just kind of just hang out on the side, play on the side. And I'm like, yo, I'm itching to play. Like, I'm throwing the ball on the side. And it just so happened they have no quarterback, so I'm throwing the ball on the side. My dad was like, if he want to play, just let him play. But really, in his mind, he needed a quarterback. So uh, my first year of playing football was five years old. I played a year earlier. And um, yeah, I was contact football at five years old. It's crazy when you think about it. But, uh, yeah, I played then. I played quarterback then. Yeah. You played quarterback? Yeah, I went from, hey, from playing quarterback to killing quarterback. That's, that's how life works sometimes. Nah, <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Nah, I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I can't imagine yoga. I was, a, hey, I was smaller than everybody then. I was just a little, you know, five-year-old. Yeah, right, got, the right. photo. got the photo, by the way. I probably blessed, blessed the photo. With, with, you see you the photo with the Bless number, number good. eight on. Hold on. <laughs> With the plastic face mask. <laughs> Kids today, though, everybody today gonna probably think, yo, what, what the hell is living with? This is like a 1972 bitch. You know what? I'm not even finna, the devil is alive. I'm not even gonna entertain that. You were born in eight, <laughs> thought because you, when we, when, when I look at you, you obviously black don't crack, as you can see, but <laughs> you 35 damn years old. 35. Dang, Except man. I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna hold you. I ain't gonna hold you. No, no, you, 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 you. I'm gonna shut up. Anyway, <laughs> has anybody, I've been meaning to say this to you for a bit for, for the next question, man. Has anybody ever told you you look like Michael J. White? I've heard. You ready to hear all, all the looking like stuff here? Michael yes. J. White. This, we can go any direction. White. Let's go. Um, Rampage Jackson. I heard that already. I heard Mark, Mark Ingram. Yes. Yes, that one. I heard Mark Ingram. Like, my mama thought that was me before on TV. I'm like, yo, what are we doing here? She's watching the, uh, one of them shows he on, one of them talk shows he'd be on, you know, commentate. Yeah. I'm like, what are we doing here? I heard that. I didn't got approached in Toronto, in the Toronto, in a club before in Toronto. Uh, some chick thought I was, so they thought I was uh, Mark Ingram. They thought I was lying to him. I'm like, that is, that is, I am not Mark Ingram. I don't know what he did that young man did to you, but that is not me. I can promise you that. You should have hit her with that. I don't know if you remember this. Uh, Did franchise boys do the Heisman on that hoe? No. Just... <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you, man? Why, 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 do, my why, do, why do you remember the franchise boys? You what? Said, hold on. Wait, wait. Hold on. What? I, I know exactly who it is, but if you haven't had the wrong person on this podcast, it's not me right now. What? You know, who, who's of who's got some age too? Yeah, you know, yeah, well, yeah. Young boys would have been like, I don't know, I don't know what coach, I don't know what coach Phil's talking about. They don't, yeah, they don't know nothing about that. They don't know nothing about that. <laughs> anyway, 
Who else do they say you look like? Other because the Michael Jai White, I see it. It's the beard, even though you kind of bigger. Is there anybody else they call you? No, that's it. Just Rampage Jackson. That, that mainly I got mainly got that in Florida, in Orlando. They thought I was down there UFC training. I'm like, come on now. Um, Michael mm-hmm. J. White and uh and uh Mark Ingram, those are top three. Those are top three to this day that I'd have heard. To this yeah. day, I done heard. <laughs> So, so you ain't ever used that car. You ain't been like, like, oh my god, you Michael John White is like, yeah, you know, I was in Tyler Perry and all that. You know? Oh no, nah, no, nah, uh-uh. you know me, I'm a, I'm a big, uh, I'm a big uh, ego guy myself. So I'll be like, hell no, nah, I'm Sean Lemon. We know, you know that. What I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> so you went, you all went off, uh, played at Westlake High School, man. Tell me, what was it like? Where did you? What position did you play in high school? In high school, I was a full-time defensive end. Um, shout out to Coach Curtis. He made sure that I was a full-time defensive end. My high school coach, he uh we did like I was getting like college type work and in high school. Like we would do D and stuff. Like some teams got guys to go play both sides of the ball. Nah, not me. I just played D and did D and stuff. I, me and my other defensive end, uh Darius Powell, we'd be down in the corner with Coach Curtis on practice because nobody else wanted to deal with the knucklehead. So but him. So he challenged oh, yeah. it into pass rushing. And, you know, he's taught me so much as a young player. Like when I went to college, all my college coaches were saying was like, yo, this guy just coming out fresh out of high school. And he already understands, you know, how to play the end, understands how to run pass rush stunts. You know, some guys just get down to high school back then and just, you know, we just gonna go out there and just play the end and just run around. Right. I was running concepts and twist games and coverage and uh, twist game, dropping in coverage. Mm. So, I was had the luxury of learning all that at an early age. Wow, man! See that, and just even the fact that even high school being a DN playing twist games and dropping in coverage because you were in high school. You were in high school. What year did you graduate? Uh, oh eight, oh nine. Come on, man! It's said oh eight, oh nine. <laughs> I was in college then, buddy. <laughs> well, excuse the hell out of me, guys. <laughs> graduated high school two thousand and six. Yeah. I was two years off. Okay. So even in that back then, obviously it was still like, it was still run game was very, a big thing. You know, people still ran the ball, but for you to be advanced and be able to know twist games, what was your favorite game that you ran? I used to like the uh, exit game. We call it the exit game. Yeah. Or EP game or the end, end is the penetrator. Mm-hmm. And the, the DN would uh, make a, basically we would call it as a one-on-one. You got a one-on-one rush, you go win. You know, the guard's not going to help because the tackle had, D tackles got his eyes. So once you clear it away and make your inside move, he'll wrap it around you. Um, shoot, I don't want against you know some studs. What Philip Taylor? Mm. He was draft picks for the Cleveland Browns. Another guy, JB Walton, who was like the number one offensive tackle in the country. Um, yeah, played against Joe Hayden as he was a quarterback. Joe Hayden was a problem. People don't know that. Really? No. Joe Hayden that I know was a quarterback. So when he went to college. He trans transitioned from – he played some safety too, but he was no more known for a quarterback from my area. Transitioned right. to speed and, you know, down in Florida went crazy. But, yeah, now nah, Joe was a quarterback. Right, man. Go ahead. Who did you build your – who did you model your game after coming – before you went to college? Like, who was you growing up? Who would you look at? Who would you have on your wall? Who was your people? I used to have a, a crazy story. Not embarrassing, but more like, dang, I used to have – a. Demarcus Ware okay. on my wallpaper on my, my laptop. <laughs> no, there's nothing wrong with that. There, there's nothing wrong there's with that. Pictures of Demarcus Ware, my my what's the name in my in my uh, in my crib, like around my room or whatever. Yeah, uh, him, Dwight Freeney was my favorites, and uh, Robert Mathis was my favorite as well. Mm. But uh, yeah, funny story about uh, Demarcus Ware. After tw- 2014, I had like 14 NFL workouts and business. Mm-hmm. So I go to the Broncos, do my workout with the Broncos. I'm back in the locker room waiting, showered up and all that. DeMarcus Ware is in the locker room. So I'm like, knowing, knowing deep down, like, yo, like I've been a big, huge fan of this dude. But I'm like, you know, act like you've been there. No, no pro wants to, you know, talk yeah. to a, the GM, um, John Elway. He's talking to um, DeMarcus Ware. He's letting him know, like, you know, yeah, yeah, just Sean Lemon. He, you know, played in the CFL, Canadian Football League, had 14 sacks, 13 sacks. And uh, he's asked me questions about the CFL. But deep down, I was like, damn, that's crazy. <laughs> I, just grew up, I, was a big fan. 
But I just tried to remain calm. I'm like, yeah, man. Like, yeah, I would love to, you know, be a part of this and all that. I just kept it cool. Politically like, correct answers. Down, I'm thinking and... like, yo, that's crazy. Like, I used to watch this dude. had to do to my wallpaper. <laughs> but yeah, no, that was, a, that was a cool story, though. That was a, that was a cool little, a little moment for me uh, at, the oh, 20, wow. at the 2014. I never wanted to. I was never going to be one of those guys that meet celebrities and just be like, yeah. yeah. all You know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's just, that ain't me at all. Uh, I'm the same way. I'm more, I think probably out of everybody I've met that I've been like on tour and everything, I never really was like starstruck. Everybody was cool, but probably the two people that shocked the hell out of me meeting them was obviously Willie and then you. Uh, I, no, man, I'm, I'm, a chill, I'm a chill dude, bro. No, 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 no. Cause when we, when I met you, I was expecting, you know, like, Expectation, you know, assuming yeah. shit, and all of a sudden I'm looking, I'm looking like, man, it's look eye to eye, shoot, <laughs> like, like, man, and we dapped up and everything. I'm just like, hey, I'm big guy, you know, big guy, but you, there's a different, there's levels to this shit. Meeting you, mm -mm. Oh, yeah, man, you gotta, you know, your, for, your forearm is here, my forearm is here. Oh man, I ain't got man. shit on you. <laughs> Man, hey man, that's that's pro football, man. Guys, train, work. I got to train, and you know, we going up against three hundred pounds on line. Like, you got to be able to be out out physical, man, and run around them. So, you got to it's got to have that nice combination, that nice little blend of both. You don't want to be too big. You don't want to be, you know, too too small type of thing. But you 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 deceptive. Thing. You are deceptively fast getting on your get off. I'll give that to you. Did you gain that? Was that more of uh, as you transition to? College, you went to at went to University of Akron, played play for the Zips. Uh, go down. I'm gonna go down real quick. Your little, you know, your little resume. Give you a little shine. All uh, for y'all. He was all Mid American Conference selection as a senior, leading the team with seven sacks and four fumble recoveries. He ended his career with 102 tackles, 23 tackles for losses, 11 sacks, five fumble recoveries, and six forced fumbles. Take me through that time, man. Going playing at Akron, it was. Not really a big, obviously, like the Power Five, but the comp is real. The comp is real in there. People don't realize that. Take me through that time, man. What was it like? Uh, the, I enjoyed Akron, man. Akron, uh, the Mid-American Conference. There's a lot of great players that come out of the MAC Conference. Um, it seemed like I never really realized how many teams in Ohio. <laughs> so, it's a lot. <laughs> so, I actually play. I'm like, yo, we Bowling Green. We got uh, Toledo. Yeah. I play uh, Miami, Miami, Ohio. Miami, like Miami, Ohio. Yeah, like in uh, – Ohio University, like you got fourteen at Akron, so that's Toledo. Like here's another one, Kent State. So we should just be the the mid Ohio conference. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> but uh, no, man, I enjoyed it, man. I enjoyed it. Uh, you got to you got to really stand out. So like, I knew in order for me to play pro football, come out of a smaller college at Akron, Division One school, but so smaller institution. I got to make plays play. So when we play in schools like Indiana. We got to play in schools like Ohio State. But I got to turn up. And, you know, college system is a little bit different because you got to work within the scheme and the structure of the defense. There ain't no college coaches in the MAC really building no defense around a certain player. Um, but my senior year, I was fortunate enough, and they did. They built a defense around me. So that was the big uh, difference in my production there, like, I started uh, played against Julian Edelman my first college sack against Julian Edelman. <laughs> Julian Edelman was a Edel nut. Yeah, Ju Julian Edelman was a was a beast at quarterback. Like man, he used to make he made me and Mondo run into each other. Me and Armando see well. Yeah. Yeah, me and Mondo was the only two players on our like team that really had like, you know, some type of clout or, yeah. or, or recognition. Um, but I enjoyed my time there. Did you get any chance to play any bowl games at all or was it uh... <laughs> Yeah, right. We was home. We was home for Christmas every year. <laughs> <I'll tell you. laughs> but, no, no, we we, no, we weren't. We had close one year. Maybe my uh, true freshman year, we were close. Almost went to the MAC championship. But um, yeah, other than that, you can, you know, I can promise my parents that I'll be home for Christmas. <laughs> he said, "I ain't gonna miss that Temptations Christmas no. in my mind." <laughs> exactly. No, we, so, we oh no, mm -mm. was there um. What was your favorite game? What was your biggest game that you had? Just my biggest game my senior year against Syracuse. That's all right. You know how it was coming. Syracuse week one. Carrier week was that Carrier Dome or you had to Carrier Dome? Well, they had to come to they had to come to the Zips, baby. They had to come to the crib. They had to come to Akron with it. I went crazy on them boys. I want to say I had what two sacks, uh, fumble recovery. I had I got some yak. 
after the fumble recovery, of course. You feel me? So uh, after that, I think that set the tone for my team season. That set the tone for my team season. I started pulling up. I started pulling going crazy after that. Was it more of a uh, for you at that time? This is and you you graduated. You said you graduated in 06, and then you were there all four years. Do you feel like staying all four years was a benefit to you, or did you feel like maybe I might have a chance to make it to the big dance to the draft? Oh, I feel like honestly, I feel like if I'd have went to a bigger school, like coming out of college, I was committed to the University of UConn, mm-hmm. and and I uh, decommitted and went to uh, and went to uh, Akron. Um, I wish I would have, you know, kind of. If I went to a bigger school, I feel like I'd have been drafted. Honestly, if the times were different, if we had times like how they have now, where you can just, oh, I'm gonna jump in the portal. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like for us, it was like we knew if we transferred, you would have to sit out another year. You would have to sit out a year and then wait the, the whole two years to play football. So a lot of guys were transferring like that. Like now, like if coach say, uh, you know, why didn't you go to class? Why they go to class? I'm gonna jump in the portal. You know what I mean? Like just little yeah. things like that. Like times is different now. We don't. We didn't have that same luxury then. But if we did, I'd have been out of there. See, no I disrespect think, to Akron. I enjoyed my time there, but yeah. I felt like you know I was held back a lot because of you know schemes like I'm an undersized DM playing a three three five defense, which is a gap gap based defense. I know, I know. Like, you know, my junior year was cool. We was playing a three four. I was playing outside linebacker. That was cool. I didn't mind that. Uh, my senior year, we uh, went back to more of like I had what four D coordinators in four years. Uh, we went back to a four three defense, and I went crazy, went crazy in that. Yeah. Do you feel like playing? You said three three five, which is fucking crazy to even think doing that. That that was yeah. that's rev- that I wouldn't say revolutionary, but still three three five with a guy your skill set. Yeah, it's ultimate gap defense. That's I mean I get why he did that. It's because you had a school like Mac, uh, like Akron in the Mac. You really don't have the pick of the litter with talent wise. Mm-hmm. So it's more of a structured defense that can get you by if guys play within the structure of that defense. It's not like built around like I'm gonna just let my dogs go eat. No, this yeah. is like the coordinator is gonna blitz up, scheme up. You know what I mean? It's gonna make yeah. the coordinator feel like a genius if it works. But um, I'm not a three three five defensive man. He's like, we're like, going to stack like, everybody. We're going to stack. Yeah, stack it's like traditional. If I'm, if I'm a coach and I am and I have a 3 3 5 defense, I'm thinking I'm putting 3D tackles in there. Mm-hmm. And on the line, that's you'll start because you're going to be, it's a gap defense. Like you're going to have great linebackers, but you want those three guys up front to just hold doubles all day. Mm-hmm. Body, who knows? Sean Lemon. I ain't doing that. Nah, nah. So graduate, gone. Did you go? I tried to figure it out, man. Did you enter the draft? Did you do anything? Or did you, you just knew, like, hey, I ain't, it's not even worth even entering. I'm I did. No, I entered the draft. I just kind of knew, like, from how my pro day was. Like, we it was at our pro day, and it was only one team there. It was the Cleveland Browns. And they weren't really trying to, they weren't really too interested. They weren't really paying attention to guys. <laughs> so I'm like, that was the year of the lockout, though. Like, that might yeah. have been the reason why. Yeah. But um, year of the lockout. And then my college D line coach, Coach Derek Jackson, shout out to Coach Derek Jackson. He was just not uh, voted top top ten DB coaches in uh, college football right now. He uh, he's a uh, D coordinator for Bowling Green right now. So shout nice. out to Coach Jackson. Um, so he had, was great friends with uh, one of his coaches, uh, Coach Wisenhan for uh, Winnipeg. He was a receiver coach for Winnipeg. So he sent my film up. He was talking to him about it, but about me. And they had me on their neg list. So I was uh, on Winnipeg's neg list, came out. He was just like, honestly, like, I don't think you should wait around. I think you should just go up to Canada and just, you know, improve as a player. Like, I feel like you fit the skill set up there. And then uh, Winnipeg came down to see me work out. And they gave me a great workout. And I went crazy. So they wanted to sign me from there. Um, yeah. So that's really how that worked. And I got up to Canada. So we mentioned it off camera. So I'm going to read down the list. <laughs> Now, for y'all at home, understand this is two from 2011 to 2023. And before I say this, let me feel just say free. Uh, feel free if you hey, hey while he's reading this list, if you need to take a bathroom break, I promise you he'll still be reading it when you get back. Because <laughs> he had a couple stops in both. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm gonna put a positive spin on this. I'm gonna put a positive spin on this. It's not about if when you hear this right now, it's 
for kids that see this as well, sometimes you age like find one and you get better over the years, man. And I've looked at some of Sean's film from earlier in his career. He, I ain't gonna lie, maybe you can agree with this. You were a knucklehead early in your career. Early in my career, of course. Yeah, early in my career, I didn't do a lot of things I didn't do the right way. Um, just coming from where I come from. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, I've always stood on principle and I'm never going to be disrespected as a man. But I am going now. I would say now I think before I react. Yes. The younger Sean Lemon reacts. He shoots first and asks questions later. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, if you know, you know. <laughs> so this is the list of Sean Lemon's career as a player. 2011, well, actually, technically, Winnipeg was his first stop released. 2011. So left three, three days, though, fam. Three days. Damn. Anyway, 2011, Saskatchewan Red Fires. 2012, actually, two two stops. Orlando Predators and the so, uh, so, Sioux Falls Storm. Play in the Arena Football League? I I can't see that. I'm sorry. I had to get done. I'll tell that story too at the end of everything. Go ahead. All right. I want to hear that. Uh 2012, 2013, Edmonton Eskimos. Elks now, politically correct. 2013, 2014, Calgary Stan Peters. 2015 was a good year for you, actually. Pittsburgh Steelers, Ottawa Red Blast, 2016, back with the Riders for a second stint. 2016, 2018, Toronto Argonauts, 2018, yeah. BC Lions. Yeah. Was you or was you? Was you just that? Hold on, hold on. You forgot 2015 49ers, too. Pittsburgh 49ers, Steelers. yep, yep. They try to make you linebacker. We're going to talk about that one. That was weird. That was a weird to see you do that. Drop in coverage, mm -mm. Mm, too big, <laughs> too, too fucking big, dog. Uh, 2016 2018 with Toronto. That was one of your longest stints. 2018 BC Lions, 2019 Toronto again, 2019 BC Lions, 2021 Edmonton Elks. 2021 and 2022, Calgary Stampers, 2023, BC Lions, and currently with the Montreal Alouettes. I need a fucking drink after that shit. Yeah. <laughs> I don't I, look, hey, hey. You entered the league my junior year of high school, 2011. I'm damn near 30. <laughs> and how the hell? You maintain this longevity. That that is to me, that's incredible to see that. Because bros are most bros are barely trying to hold on to their first contract, their first go around. So how did Sean Lemon do all everything between CFL, AFL, goddamn uh, in the arena league, NFL stints, and then back to Canadian football league? How the hell did you maneuver that over from 2011 to 2023, man? Just just the passion that I have. Like I, I love the game of football. I train hard in the offseason, like I pass rush and do defensive end work six, five to six times a week. Like, just, I take care of my body, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I'm a firm believer if you take care of your body, your body will always take care of you. Mm -hmm. um, I do things like basketball in the offseason because it helps me out with my pass rush stuff. Um, just little stuff, man. Just little stuff like that. And just taking care of your body, man. Believing in your craft and the naysayers keep you going. I said, I love that my passion is proving somebody wrong. I just, I just get a thrill out of it. When I feel like, you know, I don't have nothing else to prove, then, you know, I, even for me, I, that fire is still there and there's more work to be done. And I always feel like that I'm not satisfied. I'm my, my, my biggest critic. I'm not satisfied. I can always, one thing that kept me cute going and a lot of young guys don't really have this is that. You got to be real with yourself and understand that it's never perfect. And there's always something that can be worked on and something that can be fine tuned. When you feel like you know it all and you have all the answers and it's nothing else for me to improve on as a player, you're never going to get better. You're always just going to balance yourself out. You're never going to reach that full potential. So I always try to find something in the off season that I wanted to add to my game. Like this year, I wanted to be more versatile mm -hmm. and I was able to catch two, two interceptions this year. And I've dropped in coverage a lot this year. And just little things like that. So, you know, I just wanted to keep adding. And that's how what I'm always going to do. I'm always going to add to my game. I'm not going to come back a whole six months off with the same bag. Like, you right. got you to gotta add something to the toolbox. Right, <laughs> you know? right, right. And that that's a, uh, that's a word right there, man. Because uh, a lot of this generation, and I, I'm, I hate to even say it, man, because it kind of is like, my kids, you have kids, I got kids, our kids' generation, they 
they want the instant gratification <laughs> because they're caught. <laughs> Fuck, get the bag now and all that shit. No, you you got to trust yourself and and they want they say oh, i'm a bet on myself and yet well what the fuck are you betting you haven't done anything to really bet on yourself you feel me and one thing i noticed about you and i is that like i think we kind of like clicked because we were late bloomers in a way right. like yeah. seeing from the sean lemon i see from 2011 and through his career falling along and just learn about it you it's like night and day like i see you now calm Oh yeah, I was the same way. Not just we both got the same beard structure and all that. We look alike, but I see a brother that he wanted his chance and he was hungry. He just didn't know how to channel that and be like, "Look, I'm just gonna listen. I'm gonna listen. I'm gonna hone my shit and I'm gonna get better." And that's something that these kids don't really understand now. They want it now. They want oh you don't oh you don't. They take everything as a slight. Would you say that right. when you're coming up in the CFL? And your journey through all the places you've been. Do you feel like a lot of this generation, they miss out on, they, they misunderstand it's constructive criticism and they can't handle it? Because I know you've probably heard some, you've said some, <laughs> some stuff you've been through and you, you've been through it. So right. what would you say about that? Oh, I'm just, you just gotta, you gotta, you gotta always understand. Like I said before, you always, I'm always learning every day. I'm learning. I'm learning something new about life. Learn something new about myself. I'm learning something new about the game of football. And just just listen. Like you were giving for me, I had to understand that I was giving two two ears for a reason. Sure. And one mouth. So I should listen twice as much as I should talk. So I just kinda, you know, just self evaluation, self awareness. Mm. You know what I mean? Like yes, that's that was me, just understanding that I don't have all the answers. You know, so just understanding that and, and just, you know, trying to be a little bit better every day. Like, that's really, there's no, there's no, you know, blueprint to how, how it is. It's just, honestly, I know it sounds cliche. It's just hard work. Just yeah. hard work, belief. hard work, belief, and trust God. That's all, that's all I do, honestly. Preaching right there, man. You be having some words, brother. You be having some, <laughs> little, you get, you blessed me this week with one, man. I was like, dang, yeah. I mean, my feelings for a second at work when you hit me with that word you gave okay. me, man. That's it. Shoot. Ain't no, it ain't no secret, man. It's just, that's just, uh, that's just how it is, man. You just gotta, you know, you're a little bit older, you get a little bit more wisdom. And you just, you know, who am I to, because one thing when I first came into this league, there wasn't a lot of older guys trying to look out for the younger guys. Right. I had to kind of find my own way. So you can, you will see, you know, me bouncing around for a few teams, uh, Early on in my career, because I made some mistakes, I had nobody pull me to the side and say, hey, bro, you're doing this the wrong way. You're going about this the wrong way. Right. I had to kind of learn on the fly. And that could have been at the detriment of, you know, me getting cut from a team uh, or anything like that or just because of how I behave. But I quickly learned I ain't make the same mistake twice. No. I, I will say that I would never make the same mistake twice. And I uh, always took accountability for the things that I've done myself. So where it. was the where was the first spot that you went to where someone like a uh, you made your, you had your first vet, but you also saw the fruits of your labor. Like, hey, if I listen, man, I, I'm I'm pretty good now. Like, where oh, was yeah, a, lot, a lot of people don't notice. There's a few people in the CFL that notice this story. Uh, being uh, Ryan Dilwitty was my teammate. Ryan Dilwitty was my teammate in SAS. So I signed to SAS 2011. Um, there was a guy. This is this is a hot off the press story. Some people probably know it. Like, uh, what's the name of that one? The O lineman? Uh, yeah, yeah, no, no, he doesn't have the CFL anymore. But um, Patty Newfield was there. Patty Newfield, uh, Dan Clark, the center for the Scouts. He's retired now. This guy I was talking about. But Patty Newfield was there. There was a guy named uh, Dan Goodspeed who was like the Stanley Bryant of the CFL at that time. And I didn't know that because I'm 23 years old, fresh off the street. So I'm coming up here on practice roster. I'm like, I'm, I'm trying to – I'm going crazy every day in practice. I'm trying to get on this field right now. And I ain't waiting. You know what I mean? Young mm -hmm. guy, fresh, fresh energy. So I take some reps one-on-ones. With uh, with um, what's the guy's name? Uh, Dan. Uh, well, that's Dan Goodspeed. Yeah, Goodspeed. Uh, so I make we do like two shots of the rep. So I do one rep, go crazy, make an inside move, go crazy. So I'm like, you know what? We got they line up, do it again. They like line up again, do it again, make another inside move. He grabs my face mask as I'm beating him, and like I could have broke my neck. So I'm I'm sitting there. We get a little scuffle, a little altercation there and there. 
And then we go back to the side, and I, you know, he came and got into my face. So I punched him and dropped him, bro. Like no helmet, no nothing, no, just just me and him. And then for the coach's mind, he's like, yo, what is going on? We just signed this dude. He up here going crazy. So that's a reason why I got cut in Saskatchewan, just just off principle. Like, I don't care. Like later on I found out he was one of the best old linemen in the league. And just, I don't just give not, a damn don't if you the best fan. in the country that in the world. You, that doesn't give you the right to, you know, put my career, my life at harm's way because you don't want to practice hard. You know, so I later on then got an opportunity to play the game that same week, and then uh, after that game, they, they didn't cut you. Played. Yeah, they cut. They cut me after I played in the game. They cut me though. Because we gonna get yeah. the most out of your ass. Best believe that. Oh yeah, they cut me after the game. That was my first career start against uh, Buck Pierce. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I've been around for a while. Who's who's currently the offensive coordinator for for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers? You know what? <laughs> Let me get this and straight. He grabbed you. Was he like a mush or was he just grabbed and twist? Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. But but you know, young yeah. things, things like that. Instead of something, a little scuff football scuffle. But for me, I'm I'm in a whole another country. I don't know none of these guys. Like I feel yeah. like it's me against the world. Uh, two Tupac voice. You feel me? I feel like it's me against the world. The world. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I stood on business. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I, I put I dropped him though. So. <laughs> I'm not fighting you, not now one bitch. So you ain't happening. Nah, I'm too old. I don't, I don't fight no. I'm too old for that, man. It's 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 almost it's all it's a lot of ways to go about uh you know how to handle handle things like that. Now I would do that a whole lot differently if it was you know me today. But being the younger Sean, told you shoot first, ask questions later. Mm hmm. And you better not miss. So you also had to like we mentioned, you had to stop. Uh, arena football man tell us about that experience because i just can't see I, I cannot see you in the arena football league it was terrible man it was like playing uh playing ba playing football on a basketball court with a carpet over mm -hmm. so it's like everything that you're feeling on the knees and everything like you're feeling all that they don't got that that turf or that cushion feel that grass feel to it yeah so um you weren't making no bread but i know i needed to film because that situation that i had in sacks you know, so you know, I'm like, yo, if I'm gonna get back up to Canada, I need I need to get some films with these guys and know that, you know, that I can play. So it looks like I just got cut, but nobody really know what actually happened in Sass then. Um so yeah, I was there for a few weeks. The little bit of we weren't really making no money like that playing in the arena league. So the little bit of money I did make, you know what I did? I took my butt to Best Buy and I brought myself a laptop. And what I was gonna do was I learned how to make my own highlight tapes. So I'm like, yo, I'm not going to spend this money. I'm going to save this money up and buy myself a laptop <clears> and make <throat> highlight tapes. And I'm emailing these. I'm talking about making them, cutting them up, putting them on YouTube, sending them out to these teams in, the, in Canada, trying to get back on, trying to get back on, trying to get back on every day. I'm like, oh, they're going to check it every morning. I'm sending out emails like, you know, in the morning time, I had an afternoon shift and I had a night shift. <laughs> I sent out emails trying to get back on. So I did, I did that after games. I would just grab the little DV, the CDs, the DVDs. Yeah. And, old, and rip rip the CD to my, my laptop, learn how to, I'm on YouTube, watching videos, learning, reading how to how to make these highlight tapes. Mm -hmm. So I, I used the iMovie, made my highlight tapes, and send them out. And then one day, uh, Eric Tillman from, uh, who's that, from Edmonton, Eric mm -hmm. Tillman, the old GM there. Uh, they was in training camp. He hit me back. He was like, man, hey, man, I might have an opportunity for you. Do you have a passport? Such, such, such. I was like, yeah, yeah, I got my passport. He's like, man, I ain't going to promise you nothing. So all I can say is we need a defensive end to come in and take some reps for a training camp. Mm. He said for training camp, thinking that, like, you ain't got no shot at making this team. But I already <laughs> knew in my mind, like, when I left Arena League, I ain't coming back to this. I said, all I need to do is get in the door. I promise you I'm going to handle the reps. Right, right. So I got up there. Maybe that Wednesday in Edmonton, we played that Friday against Calgary. Mm -hmm. So they're like, you can play this week. Our starting DN is not going to be playing. Uh, we need guys to take reps, as many reps as possible. You might get a few reps in the game. So I got some reps in that Calgary game. and had me a sack. So I was like, all right, cool. Got me a sack. That's going to keep me around the next week. So then we go play. We play BC. Uh, BC comes to Edmonton to play us. Mike Riley's a quarterback. Team. Ooh. Um, so I got me had me two sacks that game. So I'm like, I'm for a show making this team. I'm for a show making this team. So they kept me around on their practice roster 
Yeah. That's why I really count 2012 as my first year. A lot of people say 2011, but I played one game, and I already knew they was going to get rid of me. So, yeah. you know, count 2012 was my first year, really. Um, so after I did that, uh, they kept me around the practice roster for, like, first six, seven weeks. They had some injuries, and I got in and played the rest of the season, like, 12 games. And I led the team in sacks, retired for the league leader sacks, or not legally, but team leader in sacks. Mm-hmm. I think I had, like, six six sacks a year. And, and, and uh, so, uh, yeah. Then go to go to training camp the next year. Uh, before training camp starts, they get cut, and I end up in Calgary. So yeah, Steve. I know that's a lot right there to to listen to, but no, no, no. This 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 is the special edition. Like I said, man, this is you. This is yeah, tell your the, story, man. It's like fascinating. I remember these stories all the way through, man. And, and you know what though? That is, it says a lot that you remember all this. And the oh, fact yeah. that you went through, first of all, do you have those those tapes? Those, yeah, still, they're still on YouTube. Yeah, my twenty, my twenty twelve. I made my twenty twelve highlight tape too after that season was over. I like, yo, I already got this down. Like, this is easy now. I done did it with Arena League. So all like, all my Arena highlight tapes going crazy. I'm talking. About I had like what my first game and it was for the Sioux Falls team. Mm-hmm. You know, I had what three sacks. I didn't even start. They played against two undefeated teams playing three sacks. Mm-hmm. Let me get up out of here. And that's what got Eric Tillman's attention. Yeah. He's like, definitely going to pull up on this kid. I had so, a, uh, there was a gym, when I, when I was in high school, there was a gym that I went to. There was a guy, he did, he went to our gym. He played for Sioux Falls around that time. I do not remember his name. He's like, he had, he was a little, if you probably remember, maybe, it was probably I was only there a couple weeks. He was only there a couple, okay, he had like, <laughs> I was only there a couple weeks. He was, he was just some short bro, had dreads. He was, I think he was a running back or something, but oh, nah. Yeah, they did the, the turnover with players in, 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 in those leagues are, it was good for me for what I needed it for. I already knew, you know, yeah. what I was going to do. So yeah. that's a blessing, though. The little, look at the little blessing that you got, though, man. It's like, look, I'm going to take this opportunity. You had the wherewithal to even see and say, hey, I'm going I'm to make the most out of this shit. If I wasn't in North Dakota, <laughs> like, what, nothing to do out there. So it's like, I ain't got nothing but time to learn how to make highlight tapes. <laughs> so I use that time to, like, as soon as I'm getting it, I know the coach is probably like, why this kid? At the, as soon as the game over, hey, you think? When can we get the DVDs of this game? <laughs> <laughs> so where can we get the actual DVDs of the other like they probably think like this dude's a, this kid's a film junkie. Like no, nah, nah, I'm trying to get the like, hell up out of here. That was the hell I'm trying to yeah, what? I'm talking about we were practicing the evening times. Yeah. So like some of these guys are like older guys that lived out there, had families, kids. So they got work in the mornings. So I'm like, yo, what? Like this ain't all football. Like they wouldn't even like we didn't really make that much money like that. So they were like, give us like vouchers to get food and stuff from different places. I said, oh, no, I got to get up out of here. Mm-mm. So I would, I would wake up in the morning. I'm uh, getting my workout in. I'm, uh, you know, then I'm about to highlight tape mix. I'm going to take me a nice little nap. Uh, give me some food. Get ready for practice at night. And we didn't even practice every day. But I, I would still go out there to field drills and get them fine to them myself. But I'm like. I'm not staying in this league. I'm out of here. I'm not staying here. I can't do this. I'm like, I, I like this. I'm serious about football. He so. got the hell up out of Dodge and said, I ain't coming back, man. That's a smart can't move. Do it, can't do it, won't do it. <laughs> Shit, I ain't mad at you. So then you went to Edmonton. You had a little little stint there, as you said. You know, I actually saw a couple games. I'm going to I'm gonna react to those uh, arena football highlights when I get the chance. I'm going to do my little deep dive in the, <laughs> the, hey, the arena football league. <laughs> out there, great passion out there. I even yeah. hit the uh, at Sean Merriman celebration on one of my sacks. Then put a little age on it. Remember the little, the little yeah, yeah, sack? yeah. yeah I did. <laughs> <laughs> you damn bit to be doing all that. Nah, um, let me see. And then also, uh, you went to Calgary 2013, 2014. And then the surprising thing, by the way, they're bringing back the Arena Football League. Are you gonna do a little, little stop there? You're gonna, you're gonna return. In 20, is it 2024? Yeah, 2024, they're coming back with the Arena Football League. No. <laughs> no. No, I don't got I no money. You, you, I don't you. got money. Cool for me for what I needed it for, but, like, I don't like how they how they treat players in the Arena League. Yeah. Like, like guys go – Arena Football is more dangerous than playing football outside. Like, that ain't yeah. safe. It's not – you're playing football on a basketball court with, with walls around it. You know. And you ain't paying these players no money. And I ain't got no insurance. Fuck no. He got insurance probably, but now 
Back then, yeah, no. Man, like, it ain't, it ain't, them guys won't get paid no money doing that. Like, I ain't even gonna get that no tell. I was over there for a couple weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I was over here for a cup of coffee and I'm out of here. You that did mean, have a, you did go to the Pittsburgh Steelers 2015. Yeah, and you played for Ottawa that year. Tell us what it was like playing for Pittsburgh Steelers, man. Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh was love. Like, just Mike Tomlin, mm -hmm. uh, genuine dude. Uh, he gonna be real with you. Um, I just had an unfortunate injury. I had a really, really, really great OTAs. And, but um, they already knew what I could do as a player, as a pass rusher. Um, but uh, they drafted Bud Dupree in the first round. Mm. <clears throat> so I already kind of knew it was going to be a long shot for me to make the team there. And one thing he said to me, OTAs one day, I mean, me and Alden Darby, that's when me and Darby met each other. Alden Darby played Winnipeg. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, one day we was going to go through the film and OTAs. And I made a nice spin move sack and OTAs. He was like, showed him the clips. He's like, Lemon, we already know. You're a hell of a pass rusher. You might be the best pass rusher we got here. But I need to see what you can do on special teams. I'm like, oh, my God. It's over. Man. Yeah. <laughs> it's over. Man. That's like, I already knew. Like, you know, and, and rightfully so, because that's the business of it. You draft somebody in the first round and Bud Dupree, like, you get Hey, man, hey, hey. He you said, gotta play. We got to play. We got your tag ready for your bag. That's it. But it, but it wasn't even that type of party there, because I feel like I still could have made it. Yeah. But then I had an injury, uh, so I had to get like some uh, Achilles shot, shots in my Achilles, PRP mm. shots in my Achilles. So I wasn't ready during camp, right? So uh, maybe the first week of training camp, I missed the whole camp, and then uh, they needed they had an injury. I was about to come back the following week. They had an injury. They needed to, you know, bring a guy in. So I was just a casualty to that. But uh, they liked me a lot, though. I enjoyed my time there. But it's just you know numbers thing. Then I went to San Francisco. I went crazy in the preseason. Went crazy. That's what made me come back to Canada. How they how they did me, San Francisco. I went crazy in the preseason. Uh, we go to practice against the Denver Broncos. I'm going crazy in practice there, mm -hmm. like legit, killing it. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, they cut me from there. They want to go to the younger guy on their practice roster. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm not even doing this no more. I'm on the phone <laughs> at the airport with the NFL. Like, y'all ready for me to come back? <laughs> Yeah, so I just went I on back, it. man. I'm like, yo, I ain't got time for this emotional roller coaster bouncing around here or there. Yeah. I'm going to go somewhere and build my legacy. I'm like, yo, you know what? I'm going to go back to Canada and build my legacy. I'm going to go back there, and I'm going to be one of the best players to ever do it over there. That was in my mind. I said, I made my mind up in that airport. Like, if I'm going to be in the CFL, I'm leaving here with something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to leave here with something. Best believe that. Yeah. I'm yeah. around the way. See, that's the thing, man. And then you went to Ottawa, man. Actually, you look at you. Could, we talk about you. You know, you're different. Uniforms and jerseys you be wearing, man. That was kind of fire. I liked you in those Ottawa jerseys, man. Look oh, you yeah, had a good time for Ottawa, man. Coach, uh, Coach Rick Campbell was the head coach over there. He went to the Grey Cup and lost to mm -hmm. uh, to Edmonton that year. Uh, mm -hmm. Odell and Odell and the boys. Yeah, uh, yeah, Odell. <laughs> yeah, man. That's another guy that should be on the show too. I'm, I'm gonna get him. I'm gonna. We 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 actually gonna talk about him in a second. Part of, the hundred, part of the hundred sack club. Part of the sack club, brother. You know, you know. I'm light, you know. You know, you know. I mean, that's the thing when you mentioned about you made a decision um, in the airport. I've always believed, and I heard Reggie Miller say this once. He says, uh, if people, someone asked him, "Why didn't you go anywhere else? Why'd you stay in Indiana for so long?" He says, "I believe the true testament of a man is to do something where nobody else has done anything." And to me, I think that's incredible Incredible for you to even make up your mind and say, you know, I'm going to do something here. I'm going to go to Canada and build my legacy because oh, everybody, yeah. Uh. Yeah, everybody, everybody want to be, every, and obviously NFL is what it is. NFL is the top tier, but there's so many, I've talked to so many guys that have tried to make that transition and they know it's, folks don't realize it's, it's, yeah, you can have the talent, you can have everything, but it's the politics and it's yeah, the it's numbers lot, it's game. Go on with that business. It's truly a business and a lot of going with that. It's things that's out of your control. Mm -hmm. Like, no general manager wants to look like, you know, I found a guy in the Canadian Football League that's better than guys that I'm drafting and I'm wasting millions on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, no one, you're never going to want to look like that type of idiot or <laughs> a guy that just, like, mis misvaluated talent when it comes to that. So, mm -hmm. you know, you don't give your guys that you invest in that, that type, those type of dollars in. You'll give them every opportunity to prove. You know, but, you know, I enjoyed myself, man. I uh, enjoyed the opportunities I had in the NFL. Um, I think it was a one thing that closed that chapter for me is I knew I could play in the NFL. You know what I mean? Like, I knew I could go there and I made plays and I had a sack in the preseason, sacks in the preseason. Like, 
I made plays. So, you know, it is what it is. Do you and I I think that's at least you know that, man. As long as you know that within yourself, fuck what everybody else think, man. I don't, oh, I, don't, yeah. I, don't, I, don't I don't need to you worry. You get a hundred sacks a yard off the ball and can't play in the NFL. Hundred sacks a yard off the ball. Mm. Mm. Come on. Say something now. So then one of my favorite uh things I found out was about your career. You and Odell, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all had a cold little tandem on that D line. No, we was going crazy in DC. <laughs> crazy. <laughs> so that's, that's that's that that, I wish we would have had a full at least a full season to play together. Our first year playing together um was like we were like nine games in the season. Mm -hmm. I had one sack when I got traded from Toronto to uh, BC, and I went over to BC. Had ten sacks in a half a season. Odell finished with uh, we have ten sacks a year too, so twenty sacks between two DNs in a half a season. Mm -hmm. He was going crazy. We led the league in sacks as a team. Well, before I got traded there, it was like they was like uh, maybe like bottom of the league in sacks. But yeah, we was going crazy. We was going. Crazy. Was it just chemistry or was it just because y'all just understood each other? We understood each other and like rush ideas. He knew where I was going to be. I knew where he was going to be. We like had the line of scrimmage talking about, okay, I'm do that. You do that. It was just pick and roll offense. There you go. That's it. Clockwork. I don't think anybody want to be alone. I think everybody want to be stocked in nowadays. But anyway, the devil is a lie. Uh, you went to Edmonton. Now, this is where I kind of came aware of you. Calgary, 2021-2022. If you don't mind me asking, <laughs> you know, you know, I, you know, I got we we gonna be politically correct a little bit because you know, uh, what happened with that situation? And all jokes aside, what happened? And you then went to BC, it didn't work out there. How were you feeling at that time? And what was what was going through your head? Uh, when Calgary, Calgary, man, you know what? Calgary was forever. It will always be a, have a special place in my heart, and it was always good to me. Mm -hmm. uh, opportunity to play there, um, you know, they always treated me good, you know. But um, it, it, which is their right? They say right. They didn't want to resign me back. You know, they always thought. You know, you get older in age, you always think like, well, I don't want this age to start showing this year. It just so happens I'm different. <laughs> I'm not gonna sign my name on paper and not be prepared to play football. Right. So right. I get what I get what angle that they come from. Um everybody has their own right to to I'm not entitled to anything just because I had in those two seasons, what, uh, 14, mm -hmm. eight, 22 sacks in a season and a half. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean that they I'm entitled to a contract. You know, they they're entitled to do whatever that they feel was suitable for them. And they didn't want to offer me uh um a substantial contract for what I deserve for the numbers that I had this those seasons. They wanted to go elsewhere. So, you know, I just said, well, I was just on the streets and BC gave me opportunity and uh, BC decided after I was having a great training camp and looked great in training camp. That's probably one of my best champs of my career um, that they want to go in a different direction and put a brand Canadian, that guy in there to go all Canadian at the end. And I changed the ratio so they can, which I understood because it, from BC's perspective, I will give them some credit. They was expecting to put a Canadian receiver in on offense. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know we have the ratio, but Hollins was snapping in training camp. <laughs> so you can't take yeah. you can't take Lucky and those guys off the field. So like, no. yo, we just go all American receivers. So and that has to change another spot. So they I guess they figured that, you know, we can just bring, you know, Kongbo, who was, you know, from the, coming from the NFL. Yeah. And you know, have potential to be a you know great player, mm -hmm. so we can bring him in as a Canadian and a starter. Yeah, so I understand the business side of it. when you get older, you understand the business side of it what yeah. they were trying to do. But um, yeah, so that's what they wanted to do because I didn't have no backup at that time. And Sione was my backup, mm -hmm. and he hurt. He wasn't even practicing, right? So it really me out there in training camp as American in. So I guess they figured they could do that there. And I was just at home. I was just at home for the first six or seven weeks of the season. And then Montreal called, baby. And the rest was great cupish. <laughs> yeah. Cause uh when we linked up, I was like, the fuck? How the fuck is he not on a team? Yeah. And weird. the rest, the shit just it worked out for you, man. I mean, and even thinking like Shout out to Danny Machocha, my guy, Danny Machocha, man. You know. When he made the call, he got it done, man. He got it done, man. Hey, 
you gonna have a good you have a good couple more years you got a couple years left in you you know what i'm saying but i still think like dang if you would have stayed in bc man that's a their whole team is nasty shout out to the bc lions man they got they got something good there man and especially with you on that if they he was on that defense you bets boy josh that secondary ryan phillips defense man god just it, it worked we'll out never, for you i guess we'll never know <laughs> but um i'm definitely happy with oh, you know, how it worked out but the thing was is like you can't control those things all i control is is my product on the field and i know once soon as i got another opportunity I'm making everybody feel my pain. I'm making everybody feel my pain. That's that's how I approach this season. Play with a chip on your shoulder. And that's how I'm always going to approach football. That's how I've always done it my whole life. So I love having the chip on my shoulder because it, it do something to you when you're playing, you know? Barring everything, man, when you got to Montreal, man, and I seen that, it was like a different energy. Because then they got you. They brought back Reggie. Shout out to Reggie. He was on here, my dog. And then they had Darn. They brought Darnell. But they already people obviously forget, man. They was in the East final the year before, so they brought all the other pieces in. And they got Cody. They got Jason. They got all these guys. Y'all just what the hell happened? Y'all just were the hottest team. Your defense was on point. What the hell, man? What the hell was y'all on? Uh, just Coach Thorpe, man. Coach Thorpe, honestly. He has, he's a, one of the, the D coordinators of the league that don't get enough credit. Mm -hmm. uh, he's just he just understood what he had in the room, and he always had a great defensive plan for us. The team brought the team together, defense together. And, yeah, we just went crazy, bro. Like, we really just went crazy, and it was a whole bunch of guys that fit each other's personality as far as, like, the underdog right. mentality. And we didn't care who else didn't believe in us. We believed in us. You know, you got guys like Reggie, young guys like Reggie proving himself, um, Sankey. You know, proving itself, proving that, you know, he's the best back in the league. Like, you know, bad guys like Bev doing it on special teams and on, on defense. Mm -hmm. Just a whole bunch of guys just playing for the guys next to him. I know it sounds re real cliche. And we didn't really care about if offense scored. That, like, this is really the first defense I've ever been a part of who did not care what happened in any other phase of the game. And just like, you know what? We going to put the ball in the end zone. I don't care. At any <laughs> point in time, we can put the ball in the end zone. Yeah, and that was just fun to be around. That was just fun to be around. So. See, see, that's that's the point. You know, you know yeah. how I knew. You know how I knew y'all was y'all was on a roll. Edmonton. Oh yeah, yeah. Edmonton, y'all. <laughs> spotted the boys like what? How much we spotted? We was losing, bro. He was like looking around the sideline. Guys, like, what's up? Like, what we doing, bro? Y'all ready to play or what? Yeah. <laughs> boys just did the kill switch. Bro. No, it was it was the it was it was weird. It was like three straight possessions. I think there was. Letcher's Letcher had the kick return. There was the interception. There was the fumble recovery. And I remember I was sitting there. I was sitting front row and you was coming off the field. And I forgot like for half a second, I had all this evidence and stuff on. And I'm sitting, I'm sitting there talking shit to you. And you looked me, it was the most coldest look on your face. You were just like, and you stuck your arms out. <laughs> like, and you stuck your arms out. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And all, and was like, I was like, oh man, they, they rolling right now. Boys is a little jet lag. That's it. We got the <laughs> jet lag about us, you know. But then that that sparked it though. We went. Yeah. People don't understand. They think like Montreal. They back their way in the playoffs. We won eight straight games. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. They, they talk about oh, you back Dojo way into some like, shit. Oh, no, the underdogs. We won eight straight games, and yeah. we took down a team that was sixteen and two. Right, and then beat a team that went to what three out of four or four out of some uh, four Grey Cups. Four in like, a row. Four in come a row. on, man. Like that ain't that ain't no accident. That's that ain't no accident. That ain't no accident. So you got that yeah. twinkle in your eyes. So you having flashbacks right now. I can see it, boy. Because oh, yeah. because oh, yeah. the best part about all that shit was to was watching y'all. Um, I was at the West Final and watching it from start to finish. Y'all game. That interception from Dequa in the end zone. I was like, they got this shit. And I ain't oh, never going to hear this. And Sean ain't going to never, ever, 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 ever. If he wins this Grey Cup, we're going to hear about this forever. Yeah. Oh, and y'all y'all changed the game a little bit, though. You got you to gotta give credit to your DC, man. Because while everybody else's defense is more... Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Y'all broke the mold a little bit by just the DB blitzes. That, that, that oh, yeah. fucked, yeah, that that's, fucked that's everybody Thorpe. up. That's Coach Thorpe, though. Like, mm -hmm. We had the guy, the personnel to do the things he always wanted to do. Yeah. Yeah. Coach Thor was pulling out film. Like, he'd be in film pulling out. 
Are we putting these new plays in? We got film copies of them from back when they were like 2012, 2012. Only only person that was around to see this but know this is from is Levin. <laughs> yeah, I was like, like chill out, yo. But yeah, yeah. So uh, we would put in like old school different play. Like we would have package like for bunch of, for uh, when we played uh Toronto, we had a, like we had like different packages. Mm-hmm. I'm I'm lined up at Sam. I'm lined up at Reggie Stubberfield's spot. Yeah, a few plays like just different looks. Yeah, and it's like it throws people off because they don't never know whether or not we were like most deep. They'll never know whether I'm rushing if I'm dropping or if I'm what I'm doing. So Coach yeah. Thorpe, we understand how to utilize this man, and we was just going crazy. And even, even the then, sack, even the sack Reggie had in the Great Cup, Reggie wasn't supposed to do what he did. <laughs> we just made the play. He made the play. Reggie, he go, he gonna be mad that I told you that, but Reggie went crap. He gave us that luxury and that freedom, man. Like make the play. Like you, yeah. be, you know, you go, you go. Y'all pro players, y'all here for a reason. Everybody in this room special. I love it, and I think that's why I like I fell in love with that shit. Just because that's very similar style that I have with my defense. Like go out there, adjust on the fly, and make the plays. When I saw Dequa in the box, three oh, yeah. straight games, and that was you got guys, all oh, guys. It's like. You know, you got you got Bev who can <clears throat> who can drop, who can rush. You got the quad who can drop, who can rush. You yeah. got Red drop, who can rush. You don't ever know who who blitzing, who dropping, who's got the, uh, the middle of the field. They're like who dropping, like you know, you just never know. And that and that throw guys off because everybody, our bag is is our DBs. We got everything. That's that's the scariest part, man. It's y'all, like man, my, Robin. and y'all disguise the shit well. Just the fact that, oh, you think, oh, he's about to go low hole. Nope, I'm right fucking here, and I'm going to hit you. Yeah. That's, but, yeah, so, again, man, that I love seeing that defense, man. So, now, obviously, y'all go on, shock the world. You win the Grey Cup, man, in incredible fashion. You have probably some of the best post-game photos I've ever seen. <laughs> the most blackest. We, we got similar taste in the cigars and the poses, man. Well, what's next for you? What you you got? You just resigned your deal, man. What can we expect from Sean Lemon? Uh, we gonna come back even better next year. We gonna, mm -hmm. we gonna be better next year. I'm gonna come back even better next year. I'm gonna go crazy in the off season. I'm gonna just you know, you know, be the best version <clears throat> of myself, and and just you know, my goal is to you know be back up there in the sack race. So if I ain't missed those six or seven games, I feel like honestly, feel like I'd have led the league in sacks. So that's my goal is to go back and lead the league in sacks. You're looking good out there, brother. Looking younger. I like it. Yes, so sir. we're gonna end it with five five questions, man. You ready? Let's go. All right. First question. Your go to movie. You can watch it over and over again. What's your go to movie? Movies. Any given Sunday and Friday. Any given Sunday, I watch them on game days. Morning time. Wait, LT? Seconds upstairs to the left. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> let's see. All right, question number two, man. If you, what's your what's your pregame meal? What you going to, man? Pregame meal. I like to do a big breakfast. Mm -hmm. So whether that be pancakes, French toast, but I'm gonna go crazy on the breakfast and lunch. I go light, like maybe like a smoothie bowl or something, or a salad, chicken Caesar salad or something, and then because I want to be as light as possible out there. So I don't want to be walking there. Me, I'm just, me and Odell, me and Odell used to eat so crazy before games. Used to eat like Chipotle. Still had me eat Chipotle before game. Never do that again because I'm out there like burping up Chipotle. <laughs> I'm like, bro, Odell, bro. Just, I said, yeah, I know. He's like, I know, bro. Me too, bro. But yeah, had me out there. We just laughing about that the other day. Like, I would never. That's what had me start to eat light now because of that. So I eat light before games. I spent a day and a half around Odell Willis. There ain't nobody yeah. like I'm looking on the camera. We, we, there ain't we, nobody we, like Country we little, K. We was at that restaurant. We was at that restaurant. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, Edmonton. I don't ever want to share it, but I'm a shy. I, can I share the story? Can I please? Can I please share? Yeah, the, yeah, okay. <laughs> Try not cuss cuss as much because people watch more people are watching now. The nigga, I walk in Black Pearl, and I see Odell. He just the most countryest. Steve Harvey ass Negro sitting there just got a hundred. <laughs> now he, I thought he was joking. He had a was it a hundred, 
a hundred oysters. We went crazy on the oysters. Yeah, we went hundred oysters. He just sitting there slurping them and just talking. I see Whoa. Sean, Sean over there on his phone. We watching <laughs> Scamilton get beat down, whatever. Made my day, made me happy. And yeah, he just sitting there just beast. slurping, just Whoa. I'm like, yeah, like yo. <laughs> what you and I'm sitting next, I'm right next to him, like, this is what y'all do. He's like, yeah, I get a hundred of them. Every time I call him, <laughs> I call him. I say, I'm coming. They got a hundred for me. That's how they do it, man. I ain't mad at him. Question number three. What you listening to? What does Sean listen? What does Sean Lemon listen to, man? Game day or just it all depends. It all depends. Like Reggie, Reggie Stumfield got me listening to whole games. Mm-hmm. Reggie Stumfield got me listening to ratchet music. <laughs> like, ratchet he said music. that. I don't even know them young dudes' names. I don't even know them young dudes' names Reggie had me listening to, but he be having me listening to them. I can only listen to that type of music, but at my own leisure time, yeah. I like to listen to like, you know, old old school music, the old school rap, stuff like that, like uh um Jay Z, uh Jay the Kiss, like fifty cent, Bench is fifty. Like I I like that type of vibe. But game days, I'm listening to whatever let me call Reggie right now on here, see. Whatever Reggie Stubberfield got on got uh Got on his playlist on his to do list for us. I know a couple things he was listening Yo, to. Yo, Reg, wake up! Wake up! <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Fuck no." Yo, wake up! I'm on here with Coach Phil. Hey, who them them ratchet rappers you used to have me listen to before the game? <laughs> they talking about the rest of the rappers. <laughs> hey, you see him? Where is he? Yeah, damn. The Toronto game right now. Hey, bro, who the rest of rappers you have me listening to, bro? Well, you listen to uh, Young Boy. Yeah, yeah, he young. be a Young Boy. He's on for sure. Listen to Young Boy. Yeah, you listen to Lil Double O. I don't know somebody named Double O Double Double O. Big X the plug. Somebody named Big X the plug. Yes, yes. He told me about that. He told I used to, I, we used to just let him go in the back area in our locker room. We used to have this like a little back area back there without all the speaker in there. The O line, we take it from the O line because they listening to like Mary J. Blige before football games. <laughs> we ain't, we ain't doing that. <laughs> to, uh, what's the one dude named Flo Rider? Okay, we ain't doing that. Why? So, you know what? I'm not even gonna ask. We take name. the speaker from them boys, and, and we and it's Ratchet TV. <laughs> Ratchet TV, <baby. laughs> we're we're stubs. Then, hey, the rest was history. I know. Get out of Ratchet music. <laughs> that was ingredient style defense. Ratchet music. Stubs is wild, man. Y'all wild. Stubs, go do what you gonna do, man. Appreciate yeah, you. Go brother. back to sleep. We finish up this podcast, man. I just had to call you in here. Can't be it. I'm always shout me out. <laughs> <laughs> shout out to Reggie. Boom, Reggie, baby. Reggie, Reggie, Reggie stay to the league. Hey. Get All yours. Right, my boy. All right, my nigga. Tell yeah. me you to turn me down. What's wrong with you? <laughs> 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 Fucking run with me or run from me bullshit. Uh, anyway. like, he's part-time job. He's going to be a little, little rapper on the low. I'll buy the mixtape and react to it. Anyway, question number four, man. Uh... If there's one moment in your career that you look back on and say, damn, I wish I would that did that differently. Do you have one of those or no? Yes. <laughs> um, when I signed to the Pittsburgh Steelers, I wish I had to sign with Seattle Seahawks. I feel like I fit. They fit my scheme a little bit better. Yeah. I feel like I, they fit me a little bit better, but I wanted to, you know, you wanted to, Hey, that's what happened when you listen to the brother, brother, man, wouldn't let me out the building. Mike Tomlin would not let me out the building. He like, yo, I don't care what we got to do. You gonna miss your flight? Um, we we gonna push this back. We gonna get this deal done today because he coached Devon Claybrooks, who's my D line coach uh, for Calgary. Um, he coached him, and so he already knew what type of player I was. So was I don't like, give yeah. a damn if he coached Jesus Christ, and I love Mike Tomlin, but mm -hmm. you was a you was perfect for the four three defense, especially that two. I was perfect for Seattle. They told me that they like, yo, listen. We would love to have you. We feel like you fit our scheme great. Pete Carroll chewing and chewing the crap out there, guy. You fit our scheme great, but um, we've been to the Super Bowl the past two years, so we can use you. But Wait, this is after the Super Bowl Forty Nine? They went two years in a row. Yeah, yeah. no, I know, I know. 
48 and 49. Oh, I can't remember. It was 15. I can't remember. Wait, wait, yeah, yeah, wait. yeah, yeah. Okay. They were good. They were good. Yeah. Then, so you would have been with Sherman and all of them on the last Yeah, leg. I left there. I left there with the impression of I'm signing with here with Seattle. And so then my agent calls me. He's like, Pittsburgh Steelers want to work you out. Like, just do the visit. Just do it. Just do the workout. You don't want to look like a guy. Like, I'm like, yo, I'm going to Seattle. I'm cool with that. He's like, just do it. The more teams want you, the better. So I'm like, all right, bet. And then Mike Tomlin get in the building. Mike Tomlin. You know how it is, man. Yeah. I, feel like, I, feel like I, I feel like I'm related to this dude. Like, I know this dude. So, yeah, that's one of my biggest regrets, though, not signing with Seattle. There's some in a few guys I've interviewed already here that they've had stints and chances to be in Seattle around the same time. Damn, Ooh. even you, Kenny Lawler, a couple other uh Jordan, I think it was uh, a couple other people, but dang, man, there was so many CFL guys that are now studs in the CFL. Yeah. That, man, anyway, question number five, man. And this is I gotta I gotta ask you this question. Do you feel fulfilled in your career oh just never, satisfied. never satisfied I'm, I'm i'm thankful for the things that's happened before but it's more work to be done like when i when i feel fulfilled and you feel like you're full what do you do when you're eating and you feel like you're full you sit at the dinner table you get up and you leave i'll get up and leave when i feel like i'm full but i it's more hey it's more work out there to be done there's a lot more food out there that, that need to be ate and I'm going to eat it. <laughs> 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 Rick Ross say, I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat it. <laughs> yeah. nah, I feel it, man. I feel it, man. Hey, brother, honestly, uh, as we get ready to get out of here, man, I just want to tell you finally face-to-face, -face, man, you don't realize how much you mean to me, how much what you say and all the good things you say to me about what I'm doing. Thank you for everything, being supportive, my guy. And I'm glad to see you. You in the league. You're doing your thing, man. And they better recognize you, that dog, when it's all said and done. Get you. Oh, yes. oh, definitely. Appreciate you, man. Appreciate you. Like, even that tape you dropped when I ain't had no job. I think that kind of woke people up and gave people like, yo, why is he at home? So I appreciate the work that you that you do, man. And, and the league, we needed this. The league needed this, needed, needed this type of media attention that you're giving, you know, CFL um, in season and out of season. So just keep going, man. I told you, keep going, man. Okay. Keep going. Oh, nobody got to understand what you're doing as long as you understand what you're doing. And I see the vision already. Everybody always will see the vision when it's too late, when it's already popping. And, okay, how's he getting these certain guys? Because I ain't hopping on anybody old podcast. Oh, I know. I know. <clears throat> I, I ain't pulled this off. Um, <laughs> no, not even just me, though. Like, the type of players that you're getting on your podcast. Guys ain't doing that for, for, for just any old body. So, Man, that, that shows how much guys value you and what you're doing, man. So, appreciate that support, man, for the league and for everybody, bro. Hey, Definitely man. keep going, brother. I'm going to keep doing it, man. And we're going we gonna, to we gonna do the thing. I'm going to walk away in about four years. Don't nobody know that. I'm going to walk away on top and do my thing. When Sean Lemon leaves, I'm going to tear the torch. You know what <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with you? All right, my man. Hey, all right, y'all. We up out here, y'all, man. This is another episode of Deep in the Game. And uh, I always say you might be deep in the game, but you got the rules missing. But uh, I got a better quote for this one. Y'all remember, it's your name on the check. That's it. It's your name on the check. Y'all take you it easy, man. What you do is your name on the check. <laughs> yeah. All right, brother. On the next episode of Deep in the Game. Like, man, Piggy, can you come in? And I'm like, we, I was just there. We had workouts. You know, I had did my workout and I, I left. Um, they was like, yeah, we need to sign a, a cornerback. We about to release you. So I'm like, they like bring your iPad. I'm like, dang, like, like this, this is crazy. Damn, like, can I at least just let me, <laughs> let me see the lease. Let me come all like escrow. Y'all, y'all don't want me to get through escrow, do y'all? Y'all don't want hey, me to be clear. It was crazy. So I'm like, all right. At that time, they couldn't technically hire anybody because of the COVID, you know, restrictions. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, I'm, you know, really just here. They gonna, they gonna make sure I'm taken care of. So, you know. At the end of the season, I'm like, man, you know, I ain't asking no bread or whatever. I'm about to be, you know, compensated for my time. At the end of that, in the season, I go up to the DC at the time, and I'm like, buddy, uh, I, you think you can, you know, cut me off something? He was like, yeah, I got you, I got you. Man, I don't even want to tell you how much money he gave me because it was it was so bad. I was just like. I'm thankful for the opportunity. You know, I'm thankful for the opportunity. Yeah. I'm that. not even, I, I, don't, I don't pocket watch or nothing. I ain't three down nation or nothing like that. Try to assume 
what your what your pockets is. But I'm gonna take a a stab in the air, man. It had three numbers. It was. <laughs> could you pay the Could you pay the cable and the light bill with it? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Hey! No, hey. no, no, pick no. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss another episode of Deep in the Game. We might be deep in this game, but you got the rules missing. Peace.